PB, you're like a bazillion years old. You're not freaking 19, what the heck? <laughs> what? God, I forgot how weird this ship was. Welcome everybody to the beginning of one of the worst mistakes of my life. As I take a look back on shipping in Adventure Time. The good, the bad, and the whatever the hell this was. And while this one was never my favorite ship, I couldn't possibly start this series with anything else. So here we are talking about a 600 year old wad of gum pretending to be 18 and the young boy adventurer who simped for her. This is all about their weird dynamic and what we loved about it, how weird it is in hindsight, and not the great love story that never happened, but the great friendship that it created. To explain all of Adventure Time is a task no sane man can ever do. The bare bones of it, though, is that there is a magical land called Ooo. No, I'm not exaggerating, it's just called Ooo. The last known human, Finn, goes on adventures with his adopted shape-shifting dog brother, Jake. Again, stay with me. Exploring magical new lands, high-tech kingdoms, battling demons, wizards, monsters of every shape, and this is all happening on Earth after a nuclear war. Again, stay with me. Adventure Time is a story of these two dumbasses, and while it consistently is just an episodic adventure show, with no massive overarching plot for the longest time, it was also filled with wisdom and life lessons that Finn the human needs to learn as he grows from a kick all your problems in the boing loins to a mature, probably traumatized young man who doesn't want to see anyone get hurt. I label a lot of Adventure Time a second monitor show. It's not something that I would actively sit down and watch on its own, but it's also something that I can never Never get enough of because it's a show that changed you grew up with this show and while it never lost its wacky roots it had a level of introspection and profound moments that only got more and more poignant as you grew up with it it's special to me and I know it's special to a lot of other people out there if just being born is the greatest act of creation then what are you supposed to do after that isn't everything that comes next sort of a disappointment slowly entropying until we deflate into a pile of mush. This was not what the fandom was talking about as the show was airing though. Nah, we had a lot more baser needs. Adventure Time's shipping game was on fucking crack. Top five shipping communities of the last decade easily. Like people were obsessed with who this kid was going to end up with. The proper princess, the renegade vampire, literal fire, or huntress wizard. Shipping drama was constant and it was glorious. Is what a lot of these ships hit dead ends, people were never complete dicks about it. Instead, it was just people showing off their passion and desire to date a character vicariously. A lot of great fan art, a lot of great fan fiction, but behind it all, Finn's love life was in a word, terrible. Cute at times, lots of potential, but the kid didn't figure out dating till he was 17, which is still better than most people, but if you met him before, then he was a mess. A stupid, stupid, manipulative mess. We love this boy, but like everything in Adventure Time, things look fine at the start, only for us to realize how deeply fucked up they were in hindsight. Which, fucked up in hindsight, might as well be tattooed across Princess Bubblegum's head. The princess of the Candy Kingdom, Finn's first true love, was a sentient piece of bubblegum. Even though she should be called onions because this girl's got layers. When initially started as a scientifically minded princess cliche, your initial impression of her is that she is kind, caring, can be tough when she needs to be, but overall, a good person. And by the end of the series, only one of those statements turned out to be true. Here is the initial characterization for Princess Bubblegum, or PB. She's with Finn in a graveyard trying to bring back the dead. This accidentally created a zombie apocalypse that she refuses to tell her subjects about, tasking Finn with keeping her people occupied while she comes up with an antidote. Finn saves the day without it, but in doing so technically breaks his promise to keep it a secret, causing her giant gumball guardians to try and murder him. But she confesses to care for him, so they let him off with a math reference. This was the first episode of the show, and it kind of tells you everything you need to know about Bubblegum and her relationships to other people. Finn in particular. In spite of being the princess of the Candy Kingdom, she is basically the queen. She's in charge and wants to keep everyone safe. 
except she does this by keeping her people ignorant of danger, coddling them so that they are dependent on her for everything. Sure, the candy people would explode if they got too scared, but there's no serious mode for her subjects. It's just trust me, do what I say and everything will be fine. This extends to Finn to a certain extent as well. Because while she's not as calling or controlling to him as she is to the rest of her people, there's a certain level of distance that she keeps. Because Finn is her friend, who she can count on in dangerous situations, and she values him as a person, valuing him for his unique skill set. She doesn't talk down to him for not being as smart as her, instead valuing his heroic qualities that made him a good fighter and an overall righteous kid. That said, there is something weird and off about their initial relationship. You can almost see them working as close friends, like they liked each other, they hang out. But PB doesn't really share personal details, unless it's relevant to the situation. Her history with the Candy Kingdom as its founder, her creating the Candy People. None of this is outright revealed until late in the story, which reveals this need-to-know basis that PB keeps everyone on. It's why Marceline was ultimately her perfect match, as she had that extra context and had a better understanding of who PB was and her needs. And that distance is something that I always felt, and is why I could never really fully ship this, as it always felt so one-sided. Finn is living the stereotypical 12-year-old boy's dream, being the adventuring hero, beating up bad guys, rescuing princesses, hanging out with your best bro, partying, pole dancing, the whole enchilada. With the whole story basically revolving around him, it's a power fantasy in every sense of the word, which I know, very much a maligned term, but in this case, it's not a bad thing, as one of the best things about Adventure Time is that it examines this trope and really puts in the work in explaining the world behind it. Finn is young. He's only 12 when the story starts, so he's still figuring out social skills and becoming his own person, not just the bag of tropes that he aspires to be. And because unlike the rest of us, Finn can go out and fight wizards and save the day, and it's just an awesome world to live in. Mostly. But it is also one that allows people like Finn to indulge in that fantasy while ignoring a lot of the life lessons people need to function when they get older. It's hard to learn violence isn't the answer when it always seems to work. Or how you can always save the girl yet your 18 year old crush can only see you as a friend. PB is always helping out Finn. Finn is always saving her. They have a strong positive effect on both of their lives. But he is also a child who thinks that the age gap is it. That's the only reason we're not together. These were such good friends. We must make a great couple. And it's that naivete that colors this early relationship from his angle. This little idiot thinks this can work, but really he has no chance, none. But it's done in a way that totally makes sense for his age. Because I feel like most people have always had that one crush, someone who was older and you thought if only we were the same age, we would totally be a thing. Plus, you have that one friend who is egging you on with bad advice. You have to be persistent. And I think the saving grace of this ship is that Finn rarely... Science dance! Hey, hey, princess! You want to spend some time with me? Post season one comes off as entitled to PB. He isn't getting pissed off that she doesn't love him enough. That he doesn't get enough attention from her. But he does rub his face against a piece of her hair he keeps in his room. What kind of shit is that? Yeah, um, remember how I said everyone had a crush like that when you were a kid? Yeah, well this is that weird shit. That while I'm sure none of you did this, you probably knew someone who was obsessed over someone else. It's not great, and in a small semi-related tangent, Adventure Time has multiple different eras to me. There's just a different tone, a different vibe for the show, and for me, the first two seasons kind of encompass the early era, where they didn't quite know how deep they were going to take this show. Uncle Gumbald being the punch bowl, Bubblegum and Marceline being exes, can guarantee that they didn't plan a lot of it. It was instead expanded on later by writers giving more depth and lore to the world. Kind of like Cookie Cat and Steven Universe serving as a parallel for his own decisions to leave the Crystal Gems. They didn't plan that. Once they realized they can make the connection, they went with it. Which is good writing. The first two seasons of Adventure Time aren't the nuanced introspection we'd expect in the later part of the series. These first two are much more built to just be a fun adventure show. It has its moments, but it was a fun comedy first with only tinges of nightmare fuel. 
It is more about capturing the feelings of youth than trying to create an airtight narrative or feel like a fully realistic one. It wanted those big emotions. It wanted you to have that sense of relatability like, oh shit, I've felt like that before. Which is why we have Finn cradling a piece of her hair. It's creepy. I do not condone this, but it nails the vibe that they're going for, though I very much still cringe at it, especially with how it's just played off. Oh, you. Ugh, I get what they're doing. It's still weird, but it does its job. It shows how Finn's crush hits an unhealthy level. The boy adventurer has more feelings than brains, and y'all are probably wondering, what does this ship have to offer? Like, besides aesthetic. Which means it's time to talk about Too Young. Unacceptable! So, backstory. The Lich possessed Princess Bubblegum and the Ice King killed her. Okay, I didn't kill her this time. Everybody saw that, right? Dude. The doctors were able to reconstruct her body because she is sentient gum, but didn't have enough to fully remake her into her 18-year-old self, so now she's 13. Stay with me. Well, I'm out of here. Goodbye, everyone. Which is the same age as Finn, which he is so excited for. So Too Young is about a 13-year-old PB goofing off with Finn as they bully her autistic son into leaving. <coughs> This, in my mind, was the one and only time that this ship fully works. We see them not just hanging out, but growing closer. The emotional distance that PB usually puts up is gone. She's on Finn's level of dumbass, which I found to just be really cute. It reminded me a lot of early Starco, where they just felt like partners in crime. They're both being mischievous, pulling pranks on each other, and just genuinely having a good time. This is PB without the responsibility of the throne or centuries of personal trauma. Like, she knows how to turn herself back, but chooses not to because she's just having a good time with Finn and no work. That probably played a big part of it too. <sighs> we had it so easy back then. But it works here. For the first time in the show, they are at the same level and you can see the potential of what they could have been if the circumstances were different. They had a connection, but it was something that only really existed in this childhood stage for them. The second PB becomes 18 again, their relationship is reset. She's ruler and while she finds Finn adorable, has no interest in pursuing a romance. Yes, she used his DNA to make a kid, but it was purely for scientific purposes. All this left Finn with the memory of one kiss that they shared and sobbing over how this ship will never work. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that this ship really does peak here. After this, he's yet again stuck between being a friend and simping. Like, I think this ship had a chance to work when Finn was older, and they did do that in the comics. But that's a whole other conversation. He was dating Marceline and Bubblegum then. I think an older Finn could have formed a relationship with PB from season one. His childhood crush turned into devotion invoking a knight to his liege, the link to her Zelda. It could have served as an expansion on their already existing relationship of Finn rescuing her constantly, or him following her commands to help the people of Ooh. He could have been the fun guy to help PB chill out and not go full tyrant. I think he could have been a good balance if he had matured enough, I think he really could have helped PB touch some grass. Because as she is, she is so analytical, she is so science focused, she is so focused on the goal that she often lost track what real people thought. That's why she ended up getting kicked out of her own kingdom, as she kept treating them as subjects, not people. So she needed some grounding influence in her life, which she ultimately had to get by getting kicked out of her own kingdom. Like Finn could have been that one. That devotion that he had also could have made him obsessive and lead him to only just worsen the problem as he obeyed whatever she did. Like I love their dynamic in all the fan art. It definitely has this romantic quality to it. The noble hero and his regal love. I can see why people loved this idea so much. That's not them though. Kiss me Finn. <coughs> I mean, kiss me, Finn! As cute as the imagery is, Finn and Bubblegum rapidly outgrew this idealized version of themselves. People were latching on to this idealized version of who they were and losing track of who they had actually become. Finn was a lovesick puppy, but he did move on to the first hot girl that he met. And PB went from a smart princess to a benign dictator running a police state. With citizens she intentionally infantilized, if she assumed they'd be happy or stupid. PB's shadiness became her default character trait, and she was all the better for it. While this ship would rear its underwhelming face on occasion, Finn having a brief love triangle 
when he assumed she was jealous of Flame Princess, or that one time that he tried to get back together after the best princess dumped his abusive ass, or when he dived headfirst into a post-breakup mood by redirecting all of his emotions onto PB, being her knight, which ended up just showing the reality of that idealized form of their relationship where Finn's devotion is obsessive and really just a distraction for his actual problems. But after all those weird jumps, those hiccups, they really do start to build a strong friendship, way better than the weak shipping that they had before. When PB is kicked out of her kingdom for being a dictator, Finn is right there supporting her and doing his best to help her out whenever he can. His feelings turn completely platonic, even going so far as to see her as one of the boys. But the memories of him being friends with her are more valuable to him than when he was trying to love her. And this is what I really value about their relationship. It's this life lesson, because sure, there'll be CJs where a bad breakup causes you to never see another person again. Sometimes people just don't have to be in a romantic relationship. It dispels the idea that romance always has to be an all or nothing game. Not being able to date them doesn't mean you have to cut them out of your life completely, which I love because that is so rarely shown in fiction. It's like a happily divorced couple. It happens, but you wouldn't know it by watching TV. Regular show played with this idea when they had Margaret and Mordecai agree to be friends. But Margaret ended up getting sidelined, and it was always couched with this possibility that they might get back together, which kind of defeats the purpose. Finn and Bubblegum were never going to get back together. That was always clear, because instead, they had become such good friends. They supported each other in their darkest hour, and unlike in the beginning of the show, they finally understand one another, with Finn trying his hardest to talk PB out of making bad decisions. If this had happened in Season 3, Finn would have defaulted to just following her lead, desperate to win her approval. Is he thought that doing what she says will make her think he's more mature, when really it just showed the opposite. I was never a Finn bubblegum person. Even early on, I recognized how cute they were, but the chemistry and interest just wasn't there. Which made me so happy that through it all, they are able to stay friends. There's a lot of pining, there's a lot of weird moments. To not support it, but to just watch it, it was still a fun ship and it really solidifies to me just how great the character work was in Adventure Time. It wasn't a great ship to me, but it was a good one. The next one, though, is one of my favorites. What's wrong with you? Don't ever mess with me again. Dude, I think I have a crush. So stay tuned for my Flame Princess and Finn video. I will be having a field day with it. Not sure when it's going to be out, so subscribe and be kept in the loop for what's sure to be one of my biggest regrets. Tell me what you all thought about Finn and Princess Bubblegum. Go correct me in the comments. Love you all. Peace out.